everybody, this is Neil Filer. I'm here with the Evolutionary Astrology message this time from the 20th of December until the end of the month 2022. We're going to talk about the December solstice, we're going to talk about the new moon in Capricorn, and we are going to talk about the energy in the sky that affects all of us, all zodiac signs, until the end of this December. So, we're coming from this time that had a very dense heavy energy over the last two months and there's a feeling that things are lining up that there's certain light at the end of the tunnel the thing is we can't see what that light is we don't see the image it isn't clear yet but there's some light and that gives us hope and that hope is a good thing because goddess knows that been lethargic and heavy and dense over the last two months and we need that kind of upliftment Nevertheless, this could be a time that we have false um, false hopes, you know, that we become too naive about things. And we might think that we have money, time and, and, and energy to take on many things upon our shoulders and things would be okay. And forget about realism and, and you know, um, we, could, we could think we are omnipotent. You know, and that would be a mistake. We need to remain very grounded at this time. This is a wonderful time for people who create, for artists, for people who need to converse with the muses and have upliftment and have inspiration and utilize their imagination. And that goes on until the end of the month with uh, Mercury sextiling uh, Neptune. Talking about sextiles, we have this uh, retrograding Mars sextiling Chiron right now. This is a great time to heal, heal our actions and actually look back at past actions and understand how we could better move forward in the future. Um, there is a square between the Sun and Jupiter in the sky, which talks about this false uh, uh, hope or omnipotence seeing the light and this feeling of upliftment and venus planet of relationships is trining uranus so we could really keep on doing these updates that we need in the relationships we have with ourselves with money with value with others and love and relationships in our lives and this is going to culminate at the end of the month when mercury and venus and pluto are going to conjunct in capricorn and this would be really a time that if there's anything stuck in the, you know, lower uh, plumbings of the relationship with yourself, with others, or with your work and, and the way you bring in value in your life and satisfaction, these can really come up to the surface and present themselves so you could look at them, analyze them, understand them better, and indeed be free of them. This is not a time to fear. But nevertheless, this is a time to prepare for. Because if we are neglecting what we know we need to do in our relationship with ourselves, with our body, with our senses, the way we eat, with the way we drink, with the way we treat ourselves, with the way we treat ourselves within relationships with others and the way we treat others within the relationships that we create, in the relationship we have with money, and work in our lives. If we neglect to do these changes, then this time could become more dramatic at the end of December. Pushing us, I mean, don't mess with Pluto, especially when it's in Capricorn, pushing us to actually go through that transformation unwillingly, even, you know, and with Pluto, you better, you better give in, you know, like a, like a, um, you know, a swirling vortex in the in the ocean you know you need to let it take you in and throw you out the next the, the other side you know you can't you can't swim against it and really we could see these these closures and these understandings that thing have things have been uh, uh false and 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 unethical or um unhealthy not hygienic in the public level as well, on the political level as well, on the social level, and, and especially when it comes to health matters and ecologic matters, 
natural uh, environment, we could see many things come up to the surface that teach us about the healing that needs to take place. And why am I talking about healing? Talking about healing because Hygieia, the asteroid that's named after the daughter of Aspicheles, if I'm not mistaking it, the name of the god of medicine, and she's his daughter, and she's in charge of the homostasis, of, you know, the healing process. And she brings up the fact that we can't take medication all our lives, you know, and just keep away the symptoms. We need to have a healthy environment. The word hygiene comes from her name, Hygieia. And she talks about the fact that hygiene needs to be man maintained, not only physically in our environment, but also mentally and emotionally, and that everything is connected. So we can't have a very stressful work, but a great family life, and eat healthy and think that we will be healthy. Or we can't have a very um, violent or unhealthy love life, but have a great career and eat healthy and think that we'll be healthy. And on, and the same way, we can't eat only junk food and have beautiful relationships and a great work and think we'll be healthy. You know, they're all connected. All our life is connected and everything needs to be hygienic. Everything needs to be clean, including our emotions, including our minds, in order for us to actually remain healthy. And this hygiene is conjunct. The sun, as it enters Capricorn on December 21st, on the, on the December solstice, you know, that this naturally in the, in, the, in the northern hemisphere of this world was a time that the greatest time of darkness and cold and, har and harsh weather was there. And before uh, Judo-Christian religions, monotheistic religions, this was a pagan holiday, you know, in which we would come together and keep ourselves warm and be happy and light lights and have all these sweet, fat, comforting foods to counter that darkness and cold and to understand that we are points of light, warmth, love, comfort uh, in this darkness, you know, and Definitely, uh, this has been translated to the Judeo-Christian religions and to the holidays we celebrate today. You know, we celebrate these ideals, but we celebrate them in a non-pagan way now, you know. But this is still a time to come back to the simple idea that we are all lights, you know, and we are able to bring light and warmth and comfort and love into this harsh darkness that we sometimes encounter. And... Be thankful for it. Simple thanksgiving, you know, for having this ability to generate this heat, this love, this warmth, this light, this sense of security and comfort. When the world is not necessarily agreeing with that, you know, or, or cooperating. Um, so Hygieia is smack on the new moon, on the 23rd, in Capricorn, and it is uh, conjunct the sun as it enters Capricorn. So Hygieia is going to be very present over the next lunar course of 29 and a half days. And we could definitely see these themes that I've been talking about coming up on the public level or in our lives. Um, so this new moon on the 23rd in Capricorn with the stellium in Capricorn of Venus and Mercury and Pluto by it, trining Uranus, trining and sextiling the nodes, calls us to go forward in a way that is mature, in a way that is straightforward, in a way that takes up the responsibility without being too grumpy about it, you know that understands that this is absolutely the best way, you know, that giving up to bitterness or frustration, instead of being in that very simple pose of thanksgiving within you, is going to make this road <laughs> far harder and harsher than it could be. Imagine that there's a great storm on the ocean, 
And there's a little ocean liner crossing the oceans, you know, going, tumbling over the waves. And inside the cabin, there's warm lights. And there's a smell of food. And people are just sitting down for dinner. Come in. There's food on the table soon, and there's enough for you as well. And we're keeping the atmosphere, if you will, within this cabin as warm, as secure, and as little as possible. While understanding that the world is going through a storm. And looking at next year, looking at 2023, this is going to be a very challenging year for mankind. And what I was just talking about is going to become even more important. This is everything I had to say. I just want to mention that if you want personal readings or to study with me, please give me a ring. Everything, all the contact details are at the end of the slide. I want to thank you for sharing this. I want to thank you for commenting. I want to thank you for just seeing this and being who you are. May we all live long and prosper. This is Nia Filer. Take care. Bye-bye.